everybody, Bean Chow here, and we're back again with a new episode on a new scooter. This is the Kimco X-Town 300. Now we've had this scooter for over a thousand plus miles of fun, just in town, down highways, it's, it's a great scooter. But it's time to do some maintenance. So we're going to be upgrading this guy with a new Melosi variator, lighter weights, a Melosi clutch, and a Melosi Kevlar, Kevlar belt. So let's get to work because this is Pichiao's Garage. So first things first, to get access to the actual variator and clutch, we gotta work our way over to the booty. Down below over here, this is actually the housing here for the variator and clutch. Now, there's nine eight millimeter bolts here with little rubber grommets. You're gonna work your way pretty much all around the housing. Okay, and the way that you know these are the right ones, they're black. The silver ones and the Phillips screw ones are for the air box right above it. Don't touch that, okay? Make sure you got a rubber mallet with you, maybe some pry tools, might not be needed, but I brought them just in case. So once you work your way around, you get them all off, you're gonna whack the, uh, the cover just lightly to break loose the seal that's around here. There's a rubber gasket that sits around there just to hold everything nice and snug. You're gonna break it loose, it's gonna fall off slowly Keep an eye on this guy right here. This is the little air box that's right here that cool brings cool air inside of here to keep the transmission nice and cool. And we're gonna be able to drop that down. So let's get to work. So now we're gonna drop this guy down, okay? Just breaks it nice and loose, just like that. Okay, you'll see how like this looks, a, looks like an air box. This is what cools the variator. And this is where your clutch and your bell housing live right here. So um, if you got time, clean this all out. This see all this dust in here? This is all your wheel dust. So it's a good time to actually uh, get this cleaned up and get that taken care of before you go any further if you want to. Now you're gonna see Here's the variator, here's the clutch. Now this is a 300cc bike, so much bigger than your smaller 150cc bikes. So we got a nice loose belt in here, which is good, it's normal. Um, we're gonna work with taking off the uh, variator and then the clutch. Be very careful, you don't wanna drop this stuff, so we're gonna take this off in just a moment with an impact gun. So on the Kimco, there are 19 millimeter bolts on here, okay, I mean nuts. Now I have this cool variator tool that I picked up on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's not the best quality build one, just so you guys know, but it locks the variator in place so we can break the nut loose on this side. This guy's a little bit trickier to, to break loose. I highly recommend doing this one with an impact gun. Um, ends up becoming a little bit better if you use an impact gun to get this guy out. It's kind of hard to lock the wheel. Um, you can try locking the wheel by putting something over here on this side, kind of across and preventing the wheel from spinning. But I don't recommend it very much because you can scratch or damage something because uh, you have to counter hold this guy to pretty much break it loose. So again, it is possible, but I just don't recommend it very much. Use an impact tool for this guy. This one you can use a variator tool that you can buy online for dirt cheap. Once we break it loose, we're gonna show you what to do next. All right, so now we got the 19 millimeter nut off. There's a washer. Remember the order that comes off in? You're gonna pull the face pulley off first. Don't pull everything off. This has a smooth surface, so we don't wanna scuff this down at all, okay guys? Um, this is pretty much what the pulley, the belt runs off of. So be careful. Because if you do mark this or score this, this um, uh, damage on here, transfers over to the belt so you can have premature failure of that belt okay guys um, one thing I highly recommend when you take off your variator inspect it make sure there's no like um, like a pitting uh, it's very common for cheap aluminum variators the pit on here so this actually is worn very very nicely um, you don't see any holes on here so really really good 
and then we're gonna pull out the the rest of this guy now when you pull this one out put your once you slide it back a little bit forward I mean put your hand behind it and slide it out as a hole okay now you'll see that there's a little um, sleeve or a pin keep that don't again don't damage or scratch these things flip this down face down pull this guy out here and you'll see here these are the new these are the rollers on this variator they're fairly light and they're pretty properly worn interesting I'm impressed and actually how well because this scooter has way over like 3,000 miles on it and this is worn very very nicely I'm actually impressed Okay, now we're gonna put the belt over here just because we don't want the belt to fall. And then we gotta work on this clutch here next. The clutch will, the bell housing will come off as a one piece. The clutch itself will come, as a, come out as a whole as well. The next piece that actually has to come off is the actual spring to separate the pulleys. And that's gonna be a little bit harder to do. So let's get this guy off and then we'll show you guys what to do next. All right, guys, so next step is to remove the bell housing and clutch. So using your variator tool, if you look inside your bell housing, there should be two little tiny holes that should be able to lock that sucker in. That's what pretty much um, will prevent the clutch from spinning and the bell housing from moving. Do that, counter hold like this and pull up, and that should come right off. Pull that guy off. Okay, nut, washer, in that order, bell housing, and then the actual clutch should just come right off, just like that. All right? Again, keep your belt in here. Just want to keep it out of the way. The next step here is to remove uh, the clutch. And you'll see here we got to remove this nut right here that holds the compressed spring um, on the pulley here and then we got to swap out the clutch material I mean the clutch these are the clutches right here this is actually what engages your um, your real wheel when you're accelerating on this pulley wheel from from the variator to the clutch all right so for you guys to remove and separate the spring from here, you need two four inch C clamps. Do it from the opposite of each other, compress it. Make sure you don't bend the fins from underneath and then just use a big old crescent wrench and take the nut off and then slowly separate the two, um, uh, the two C clamps uh, to decompress the, uh, pretty much the clutch and the spring from everything. You can see here, stock aftermarket spring all Molosi, all Italian versus Chinese. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's good stuff, but we're here to get some actual like street performance upgrades and more reliability. You know, Molosi is amazing uh, Italian made product, so it's you know, gonna be a nine day difference in how the car, uh, the bike opens up in general. I did a full Molosi on mine and never looked back. So factor variator, aftermarket, um, you'll see underneath looks a little different. They, they're a little bit on um, much lighter in material. Um, I'll see if I can do a weight comparison. Um, but they look almost identical uh, in just the way they look. You use the factory face, just so you guys know. The variator that uh, Melosi gives you, they don't require an upgrade on the face, just only on the variator on itself. So this portion here, they give you a new insert and two sets of weights. They give you a set of 17 and 20 gram weights. They give you a new um, housing adapter here to hold them in place. 
uh, much, much heavier material. The Melosi clutch here, you'll notice it has six pads, so a much more uh, grabbing the surface. A performance bell housing. Now what's really cool about this bell housing in comparison to the factory one, it actually is grooved to push more air into the clutch. So you actually get much, much better cooling performance overall. There's a spring perch. You look at the factory one. It's just a little basic bale housing, nothing special, just so the clutch can grab onto it. And you'll see, again, six pads of material here versus three big ones. These, are, again, provides more gripping surface. And since there's six pads, you have less chances of glazing over one gigantic pad like this guy. A little bit better even wear over time as well on this style of a clutch. So now with all further ado, we got to pull all this back in. Let's get to work. So our first step in this process is the new spring. Get that bad boy in there. I believe this guy goes in here too. All right. So next step is your clutch sandwich. So spring, you need the sleeve on top. The little sleeve perch here just makes it nice and snug so the clutch can sit on. And this goes in. Then you have to make your way down and squish this all the way down by hand or um, try to get it um, on a press like over here like I have on my over here on my shop we're gonna squish it all the way down as slow as we can and you gotta be able to you gotta square it off because this has a guy you have to guide it into this hole then if you can get a couple turns on here get it off the press and then kinda get your um, your C clamps and then squish it back together or you can stand on top of this whichever way you guys think it works for you I'm gonna try to do the press first and then I'm gonna work my way over to standing on top of it and then going from there. A lot of people stand on top of them and then just do it by hand that way. We'll see how it works out for me. So what I ended up doing actually worked out pretty easy. I put one knee here, one hand up in front, pushed it all the way down, squared it off, and I was able to thread it on by hand. Your next step is to pretty much get this compressed even more because you gotta lock the you gotta lock this guy down. Um, nice and snug before you can put this back on the the scooter with the bell housing so using my press What I ended up doing was sandwiching the both pulleys on a good piece of wood top and bottom Since I already got this started with uh, with my hands All I had to do was just tighten it down nice and slow until I got it nice and tight and get this guy really snug And that's it now. We're gonna work our way to installing this back on the bike with the belt because you got to put the belt on first, then the bell housing, and then you can bolt this on and then you can work on the variator next. So next step is the belt. Has to go on with the bell housing first. So you can get that guy on there, slide it on. Make sure you feed the belt correctly here. If you don't do this first, you're never gonna get the belt on because the belt has to go on first with the clutch. All right, so once you have that, you can grab your spanking new bell housing right here. And slide that on. Okay, remember, washer first, then nut. All right, so now we got our new bell housing clutch all set with the new Molosi yellow spring. Our next step is to put in, install our new variator. Now with the variator, we want to go lighter weight for better acceleration, but then you need a little bit more weight for top end. So what we're going to do, we're going to mix and match our weights. We're going to do 317s and 320s. Now this gives us a little bit of both worlds, so you benefit with a little bit better uh, acceleration and then you're going to have that beauty, um, beautiful top end that you like on a much higher uh, CC bike. So 
you want to have more top end. So you have to pick one or the other. You can mix both, but if you mix them, just so you guys know, um, you get some weird stuttering because it's not evenly weighted. So I definitely recommend playing around with your weights. It's literally a three minute job to pull out the housing and then pop in different weights to find that happy spot that makes you guys really happy when you're riding your bike. So you can either mix and match or just go one weight all the way. I'm gonna try first 17s and then I'm gonna go to 20s and then I'm gonna mix and, mix and match and see how I enjoy it. Everybody's gonna to be different. Top speeds, um, uh, acceleration, uh, mix of both uh, is varies depending on the rider. So remember that and depending on where you live, especially altitude and all that, how all have effects on the way your bike uh, will ride. So what I can tell you now is that I'm gonna go lighter weight for better acceleration, but you lose top end. Same way, vice versa, higher weights, lower, slower acceleration, but better top end. That's how it kind of works for variators. We went with the clutch, a high performance clutch because we want it to grab at, at a better, um, just much lower RPM so it feels uh, better on the get-go from acceleration. This also uh, ex extends the life of your clutch and your bell because it has better cooling. So you're already benefiting from all this stuff right off the bat for a longer life uh, and a longer, a more reliable scooter over time. So we're gonna need the face. The old face is what we're gonna keep and we're gonna reuse from your variator, but we're gonna pop in a new variator. Now, you guys gotta understand one thing when you guys install this, very, very important to this. I'll show you guys in just a moment here, is the rotational, the rotation of your scooter. So here's your variator, okay? Your variator just rotates this way, all right? So this way, so it pulls your belt and turns the tire, okay? So if it's rotating this way, you have a very specific way that your weights have to rotate it, okay? So these are the weights that, this is a stock aftermarket. Uh, you'll see brass insert, metal insert inside of it. Much softer material, much more reliable, better weight. Okay, now you'll see the face here and then the back sides. Okay. This is where the weight is inserted and it stops. The weight's inserted and stops on this side. Okay. So for this, actually, no, hold on. No, the weight's inserted this way and stops on this side where the, where the lettering is on the Melosi. So we want the rotation, the face to go in the rotation the way that the variator is going. Okay? So if this variator is rotating this way, you want the face to go the opposite direction. So, you can see this like this. So the facing, and the reason for this is because you don't want this insert to fly out. So the, the rotation this way, so all the pressure from this thing is gonna go towards the back of this, and that's how we want that to go, like that. So it's rotating this way, so the face fits in the opposite direction, just like that. Remember that, very vital. So now we're gonna slap in all 17 grams, all six of our 17 gram weights in here. Then we have our variator face for the weight holder. And these guys go inside these little notches right here. That's what holds the weights actually in place. go now we got to grease this up before we install this needs a little bit of grease 
for this guy before we swap put it in. So now that we uh, added a little grease on here, I want to put this in first. Put that bad boy back there. Okay, just like that. Now before we install the new belt, I mean install the belt, we want to clean the face of this variator because we have dirty hands and we got some grease on it. So we don't want any type of slippage on there. So there's that. Now the belt goes on, just like that, and then we're going to slap in our new, our, our old face. And this is where it gets a little difficult because your belt kind of pulls the face out, so. We gotta get this face nice and on there. Use your variator tool. Kind of lock that bad boy in place like that. Get your tool here. Just get it snug. That guy on. All right, now we got to lock the variator into the clutch. See if we can. If not, we have to use an impact gun. Yeah, I don't see the hole to lock it. <laughs> that sucks. So we got this guy nice and tight. We gotta get this one nice and snug right now. So I'll be right back. All right. So we just gave it a couple ugga uggas with the impact gun with about 60 to 70 foot pounds of torque on each one. I can't use a um, pretty much a, what's the word? Uh, oh my gosh. Not a breaker bar. Oh man, it's been a while. Sorry guys, I'm just so out of it right now. With my torque wrench. I can't use a torque wrench just because of my hand, my problem with my hand right now. So I gotta rely on my uh, impact gun right now for the moment. But we pretty much gave it a good 60 to almost 70 foot pounds of torque on each bolt. 
Uh, that's going to hold it. Typically, these call about 55 to 60 foot pounds of torque. We went a little over. We should be fine. Not going to damage anything. Um, now, time to reverse install the cover. Uh, we make sure our belt is in good condition and nice and tight. And that's it. We've now officially installed a new variator with uh, 17 gram weights, a new clutch and bell housing with uh, high performance bell housing and clutch from Melosi. And now we are now going to put everything back together and we're going to give it a test drive. Unfortunately, it is 8 o'clock, uh, 8 p.m., and I can't do any video footage of my test ride at night. So I will give you guys a heads up when I'm done. So if you guys can hear that, the bike is on now, and it's at idle. So one of the biggest issues that I had with this bike when it was at idle, it had like a rattling noise, like something was loose, like a can of marbles. And more than likely it was the old variator with the weights just bouncing all around inside of it and just not very good. It was a noisy variator. Now it's like silent. All I can hear is just the exhaust and it revs up a lot faster than before. I like it. So now we're gonna go and give this a test ride and see if we get a decent benefit out of the performance mods we just did. Be right back. All right. So, give it out for a quick spin. It accelerates a lot faster <laughs> for a 300cc scooter. It is pretty gnarly. Um, hopefully I got more time tomorrow. I'll probably do some footage of just the general acceleration of this scooter. <laughs> Uh, using the new Melosi clutch and variator kit with 17 gram rollers. It is it is fun. It is a quick bike now. Um, you guys see my Royal Enfield and my Honda ADV 150. Ah, bright, bright light. I got this guy too. We got a new bike here. My GS750 that we're going to restore and turn into a um, cafe cruiser down the road. This is a, a long-term project that I'm excited for. I've been hurry hunting parts down. I got a shop be doing my carburetors pretty soon. I want to get this bike at least running and then going forward towards the, to the next step. Um, over here again, um, pretty much it's very, very straightforward for the installation on this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we got some more uh, mods coming up pretty soon. I'm thinking for this bike, probably gonna do uh, a new Kevlar belt. We're probably going to do a little bit more of their fun stuff. Uh, definitely going to be upgrading the exhaust on this thing. This thing needs an exhaust night and day. Number one, this thing weighs a metric ton. And it looks horrendous on this bike. So we're going to fix this and get it a much sportier exhaust. And a better note, you remember, loud pipes save lives and... So a louder exhaust will make this bike better, number one. Two, more visible because people are going to be looking around for that noise. And number three, it's just going to look better. It's going to have a much nicer look to it. So thanks for watching this episode of Pinchal's Garage, now with bikes, uh, a.k.a. motorcycles and scooters. Uh, this is our 2022 Kimco X-Town 300. Hope you guys enjoyed the uh, DIY, and we'll see you guys again here at Pinchal's Garage. Peace out, everyone, and have a wonderful night.